I always found the conversation for the best movie to be kind of boring. Because how are you supposed to earnestly compare two beloved, influential films, especially those of different genres? Like, which is the better movie, Pulp Fiction or Silence of the Lambs? How does Parasite hold up against, say, Forrest Gump? If a great comedy can make you laugh and a great thriller can put you on the edge of your seat, how can you definitively say that one is superior to the other? If they both work great in their own way, which is truly better? It's just kind of what you're in the mood for on any given day. At least for me. A good movie is a good movie. And too often, comparing them against one another devolves into conversations of personal preferences or popularity contests. Or the Academy just jerking itself off. Remember when The Artist, a silent movie, won Best Picture in 2012? When was the last time you or anyone you know watched The Artist? It's all so silly. And every year at the Academy Awards, we all collectively do this exercise in futility. But what if we change the exercise a little? What if, instead of trying to find out which of the vastly different good movies is better, we focus instead on finding out which of the vastly different bad movies is worse? Because while good movies can be good for a million different reasons, bad movies tend to all suck in the same sort of way. Writing, acting, editing, sound design, this stuff is more universally comparable when you're not evaluating the quality, but the lack thereof. I don't know about you, but to me it doesn't really matter what the genre is when I'm stuck sitting through a bad movie. Whether it's some lame-ass buddy comedy dubbed The Next Superbad or installment 86 of the fucking MCU, I'm likely getting the same reaction regardless of genre. I'm gonna be bored. I'll get totally sucked out of the immersion and be checking my phone constantly, Maybe I'll start nitpicking mistakes in the editing or just completely zone out and retain no information for minutes at a time. We've all been there. We all know how it feels to watch some real crap because there's been plenty of it lately. But the point is, it doesn't matter what type of bad movie you're watching. That feeling of suck is universal. And thus, through this lens, we can compare the magnitude of a film's ability to evoke an emotional response in the viewer rather than just comparing which emotional responses we prefer outright. It's no longer which is better, a comedy or a thriller, but did either of these dumpster fire productions accomplish a single thing that they set out to do? That's a much more manageable conversation. And that's why I believe the search for the worst movie is far more compelling than the search for the best. Because the best movie is subjective. The worst movie might just not be. And I think we can figure that one out. I also just love bad movies. Because aside from the obvious fun that can be had watching a movie fail spectacularly, Bad movies serve as an important function as a basis of comparison. I don't know about you, but I get newfound appreciation for spectacular filmmaking when I see what the end product looks like in less than capable hands. For all the lessons to be learned from studying the greats of the movie business, there's 10 equally important lessons to be learned in what not to do from Hollywood's less than reputable productions. But just how do we go about all this? Thanks to modern editing techniques, we can use existing footage to complete the film without Millhouse. Watch. We're going to pull together and we're going to find a way to get out of here. First, we're going to seal off this room. Seamless, huh? You're fired. And with good cause. So now that we've intellectualized our rationale for watching a bunch of terrible films, it's time to actually answer the question, which one is the worst? Naturally, the first and easiest thing to do is check the lowest rated movies on three of the internet's most prominent sources for film reviews and criticism, Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and IMDb. Pick an arbitrary cutoff point and boom, you have a list of the worst movies ever according to the collective knowledge of the internet. But before we can analyze them further, we need to refine the results. Because as of writing this video, there's 41 movies on Rotten Tomatoes that have a critic's consensus of 0% with at least 20 reviews, there's 25 movies on IMDb with a user rating 3.0 or lower, and 33 movies on Metacritic with a review score in the single digits. There's also 45 Golden Razzie Worst Picture Award winners since 1980 that I'm tossing into the mix in honor of the original bad movie aficionados. And after removing all the duplicates from these sources, you're left with a total of 130 movies, but of these 130, we need to remove some from contention. And that's because in order to be the worst movie of all time, a film must meet two more criteria in addition to poor reviews and user ratings. Number one, in order to be considered, a film must have a budget greater than $20 million. 
Because let's face it, it's easy to rip movies like The Room or Birdemic because they're so cheaply produced. But this is low-hanging fruit in my opinion. And while it's obviously dubious to assume that more money in the hands of Tommy Wiseau would have fixed the problems with The Room, I believe it's a bit more forgiving when a movie on a shoestring budget or an independent production makes noticeable mistakes. What's less acceptable is when a studio puts tens of millions of dollars into shoddy work. So I've chosen 20 million as an arbitrary cutoff point. So I'm sorry to say, but if you were here for reviews of Human Centipede 3 or Hillary's America, the secret history of the Democratic Party, I'm afraid these gems amongst others didn't make the cut. Number two, movies on our list must have lost money at the box office. And the reasoning for this is simple. No matter how bad a movie is, it simply can't be in contention for the worst movie of all time if it succeeded financially. Because a lot of the reason these movies are listed here is because of critical response. But if a movie was panned and people still paid to see it, who are critics to have the absolute say? In fact, some of the movies I'm about to discuss have higher, albeit still generally low, audience ratings despite being hated by critics. And these films were still considered successful endeavors at the very least in terms of the studio's books, which means they simply cannot be the worst. The worst movie must fail on all accounts, both critical and audience reception, as well as financial return. It's worth noting that some of the movies that missed the final list could technically meet the requirements, but ultimately need to get the acts for one reason or another. Like Showgirls, for example, which won the Razzie for Worst Picture, was panned by critics upon its release and flopped horribly in theaters, but ended up generating over $100 million in video sales over time. The movie has garnered a cult following and a lot of critical reconsideration as a satire in the decades since its release. And so any film that can generate newfound appreciation after the fact like that is simply out of the running. Even though the movie on paper should be on our final list based on the initial metrics, Showgirls is proof that time can change our opinions of some movies. Maybe Gotti is Travolta's Pulp Fiction 2 Electric Boogaloo and we just don't appreciate his genius yet. So to recap, movies on our list must have a budget greater or close to $20 million and lost money at the box office while having little to no cultural impact outside of being a laughing stock. With that in mind, we now are down our list to these 21 movies that perfectly match our criteria, as well as an additional 18 from the pool that are close enough to making the cut that they're worth talking about for a different insanely batshit reason or another. That leaves us with a total of 39 movies to judge. And yet our list still feels incomplete. So far, these sources of bad movies have only taken into account critical and audience reviews. And while that's important, it isn't everything. What about movies that were bad because they were black holes for the studio's money? Because movie budgets have inflated to astronomical levels in recent decades. And $100 million worth of special effects might be enough to bump a bad movie up a few decimal places off of IMDb's worst of the worst list, but it isn't enough to escape our wrath. And since watching every single mediocre $200 million summer blockbuster of the last 30 years makes finishing this series unfeasible, I went to the list of the movies that lost the most money at the box office in history. The biggest, most bloated flops in cinema. And breaking down these was really interesting. I took the 20 biggest box office disasters from the numbers.com database and then compared the Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and IMDb ratings for all of the films on the list. And this was fascinating, not just for the movies, but for the review aggregators themselves. Like Space Jam A New Legacy, which lost $113 million at the box office, by the way, is hated by critics and users on Metacritic, and users on IMDb, and critics on Rotten Tomatoes, but has a 78 user rating there? That's kinda sussy. Another weird anomaly is the Mulan remake, which is the only film on this list to be rated positively by critics, yet very negatively by viewers which I thought was interesting. You also had movies that critics panned, but viewers really enjoyed, like the recent Keanu Reeves movie, 47 Ronin, or Guy Ritchie's King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. What was most fascinating, perhaps, were the movies that lost a ton of money despite being generally well-received by both critics and audiences. Pixar's recent release, Onward, for one, which unfortunately released right when the pandemic was starting, so kind of a victim of circumstance situation that it ended up on this list. Also, Hugo, which is a kid's movie directed by Martin Scorsese. I had no idea this movie existed, but it was nominated for Best Picture when I was in ninth grade, which is kind of crazy. I wonder what it lost to. 
Oh, God damn it. But this list of the biggest losers bestows upon us four additional picks to consider. Each of these films is close enough in negative review metrics that the substantial financial losses incurred on top of them warrant further consideration. When you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a movie, that standard is higher. And these four films miss that mark with colors so flying that they deserve to be on this list. Um, okay, how about this? Adam Sandler is like in love with some girl, but then it turns out that the girl is actually a golden retriever or something. No, oh, perfect! We'll call it puppy love! Give us another movie idea, Awesome-o! Yeah! Let's hear it! Well, yeah, we wanna on, hear it! So after checking all the available data from movie review sources around the internet and cross-referencing and double-checking every failed film to find the true worst of the worst, we're left with these 43 absolute, without a doubt, most horrible motion pictures ever produced. Which is fitting, because movie 43 is most definitely on this list. It's one of the few I've actually seen before I started this project, and my god is it worthy of the title. But I gotta say, I'm really excited to watch some of these. There's this Kelly Clarkson movie that came out like nine months after she won American Idol, really capitalizing on that moment, super opportunistic. I'm sure it'll be horrendous. There's an Amber Heard movie on here, so that's topical. And on the other end of the topicality spectrum, there's not one, but two Paris Hilton movies too. And I'm obviously pumped for the spiritual journey that is the infamous John Travolta Scientology movie, Battlefield Earth, a saga for the year 3000. There's this weird, ludicrous Terry Crews gang movie. There's that weird Jim Carrey Netflix crime movie. There's a Dennis Rodman action movie that, that. Why in the hell did you gag her? I hate this, baby. She wouldn't, she, she wouldn't shut up. A potato, a damn potato, huh? I tried grapes, but she kept eating them. Maybe you just want some great poupon. Hold on. <laughs> And I just cannot wait to see. And there's even Septic Man. And before you ask, yes, it's exactly what you think it is. I actually couldn't find any financial info on this movie to verify if it meets our criteria, but I'm sorry, I need to see what this damn Poopy Man thriller is on about. There's a lot of weirdness on this list. But after crunching the numbers, I can say with a totally arbitrary degree of statistical certainty that the worst movie of all time exists within these 43 movies. Now comes the hard part. I'm going to be watching every single one of these films and presenting the horrific details of my findings to you in the form of an ongoing series on this channel. Because it's not enough to just go to the last page of the top movies list and pick the lowest one. We've got to get into the nitty gritty and actually watch these bad boys. This is going to be quite a long series, so if you're interested in partaking on this journey to flame all these bad movies with me, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, other YouTube things, you know it's always appreciated. And please let me know which movies you want to see first, because I have no idea how I'm going to select them, and I'm probably going to have to randomize it to prevent me from always avoiding picking some of these monstrosities. Like, I need a third party to tell me to watch Cats, I'm not capable of doing it to myself. But that's the deal. 43 movies enter, only one can leave. What's the worst movie of all time? Let's find out.